Welcome to the Zone Reformer Podcast. I am your host, Alfred Tabax, joined as always, except for one time or a few times, by one, my lovely co host. Maybe like once or twice. Yeah, you missed a few too. But yeah, that I know. Before, that was before you were the full host. Before the Fire Nation attacked. The Fire Nation. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, you guys know Nate. He's the co host. He's beautiful and stuff. Not so, really, but we'll yeah. pretend. Yeah, you you get you see him. You can make your own judgments. <laughs> so we're just going to kind of jump right into this. Uh, this is going to revolve mostly around the Switch, but I wanted to have a little bit of some Zelda inside of it, just to kind of you know make it cohesive with the website. But we got a screenshot of Breath of the Wild today that looked like a shop with a dragon's head on it, and a lot of people pointed out that that might be Beetle um, in the picture. Now, I. Didn't really. I have no look idea at it what you're too talking long. about. Well, there's a screenshot that was posted. I'll put a picture of it up on our uh, on the video version. Sorry if you're listening to this on uh, the audio version, but there's a picture that looks like it has uh, a man with a really big backpack on it. So it could yeah. be a campsite, it could be um, a place that he beetle comes or a shopkeeper comes and brings in some items, like just a traveling salesman. Uh, but that kind of got me thinking, we've talked a lot about mechanics and races that we want to return, um, but what about characters that we think might return or would we want to return? Um, so just name like one or two characters that you think could work or you kind of want to see again, aside from like the races like the Kokiri and, you know, the Gorons and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll throw that to you first, Nate. Tingle. I know, that, I know you said like one or two. That That's my one. Just Tingle? Uh, he is one of my favorite characters in the series because I, I kind of think he best represents what I wish I could be. <laughs> um, an adult <clears throat> with that childlike enthusiasm uh, pursuing your dream no matter what. I mean, that's really what he's doing. Uh, and I know, you know, haha, he's a funny character and he's meant to be funny. But um, I mean, really, I mean, he's a 30 year old guy who always wanted to be a fairy and he pursued his dream, even though he can't ever actually be one. Um, Do you so, think he'd sell uh, maps again? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's difficult in this game because you the maps couldn't be covered by the spirit towers. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so I think if he was in the game doing any map thing, it would be more like, um, like hint somewhere chests are and stuff. Um, unlocking that ability on your map. Uh, you know, obviously op- completely optional, like everything else seems to be in this mm-hmm. game. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I, he, he's just always been one of my favorite characters. And I know that's not a popular opinion in America. Uh, <laughs> he is very popular in Japan. He's got two games in Japan. Yeah, uh, three. Three? But, yeah. But, uh, and one of them came to Europe. None of them came to the United States. No surprise. We don't like Tingle here. <laughs> um, but Switch exclusives. Yeah, I, I, I guess I've always liked him because he best represents uh, what I wish. I mean, I have children and all this stuff now, so like, I can't be, like, I, I could at times be a child, but I I really can't live out, you know. I mean, I'm saying this as I'm sitting here covering Zelda, talking about Zelda, <laughs> and doing this stuff practically for a living. Um, so it's like, yeah, I'm kind of living a childhood dream, but not really. Um, I don't get to act like a child. I have to act like an adult. I have to be mature in a lot of situations that I really don't want to be mature in. I want to stop my feet and swear and <laughs> act like I'm 10, but, but I can't. Um, I, mean, you can. Tingle, I mean, I can, but it's just not the right thing to do. Uh, and I have children that I'm trying to set a good role model for. So, uh, yeah, like he, he's one character I've always wanted, always wanted. I basically always want every Zelda game in some kooky way. Uh, outside of that, um, the happy mass salesman. Uh, if only because I sincerely hope him coming back would have some sort of mask related side quest, even if it's not transformation masks. Um, even if it's something as simple as all the mass trading you did in Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Uh, j- just something like that. I-, I just like that whole, again, it's another childlike thing. Of uh, you know, wearing masks like Halloween and all that stuff. I don't know. It, it, if you can't tell, there's kind of a running theme with the two characters <laughs> on my back. 
And that's weird because most people remember Happy Meal Salesman from Majora's Mask, who's a lot more serious. Uh, but, yeah. Let's see. That's, for that's me, what I got. Um, I'd like to see... Okay. Fi, I, I say Fi. Um, Fi. I'd like to see her return. Um, just because we're shown in the screenshot like a rusted Master Sword. Um, and we learned in Skyward Sword the la- the last game of the series, or last game released in the series, first canonically, that this Master Sword is alive, we've just never actually seen the spirit of the sword until, you know, Skyward Sword, and it's not really clear why we haven't seen it, other than the fact that this wasn't like an after point or an afterthought. Um, but I'd like to see her return, um, just since this has a greater lean towards story, especially since Skyward Sword kind of did. This has a lot more lore, and I'd like to see that. Um, <clears throat> but I'd also like to see her explain, I don't know, maybe like, why she was dormant all this time, what happened, to just kind of get some more backstory on that. Um, that, that I think that'd be interesting to, to see happen. Um, sure, sure. And then kind of along with that, I'd like to see Demise again. Um, and we've kind of seen him in other games, like uh, in uh, Twilight Princess, I think it was, with the, the face of Ganondorf that resembled more Demise um, in the, the backstory. But I think, was it Twilight Princess, or am I thinking of a different game? Well, well I don't know. <clears throat> I, I totally missed your train of thought. There was, like, a backstory being told, and there was, like, this face on fire. It was just a face made of fire, um, and it looked like Demise, but it was supposed to be Ganondorf, I think. Um, it might have been Twilight Princess. It might not have been. Yeah, yeah. you're thinking of Twilight Princess when uh, he's talking to Zant in the Twilight Room. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, I'm, I'm, a ma- I'm hoping that we get to see him again, although... If Skyward Sword had taken place or had been released, let's say, on uh, the GameCube, all of this would be a lot more... The payoff would be better, having waited so long. I mean, it still has been like six, seven years since we got a proper Zelda game um, released on a console. But um, seeing Demise again would be an interesting way to, to show... Like, depending on where this takes place in the timeline, like, if this is at the very, very end of one of the timelines, or the start of another one, or mid, or halfway, um, or it ties it all together, like some theories, uh, have stated, I think our own Daniel talked about it being a dragon break theory, um, that we see him, like, the culmination of all of this lead right back up to where it started, and I think that that'd be kind of cool, um, to see two of those characters come back, again, like, a, you know, Aside from those, I agree with your Happy Mask Salesman. He's one of my favorite characters, um, just because he's so weird. He exemplifies like that weird kind of creepy aspect of Zelda. If we're referring to the Majora's Mask version, as opposed to like the Ocarina of Time version, which you know he's still great, but I, I prefer the Majora's Mask. It's funny because it's the same character in both games. So yeah, that's true. He just plays more of a role in one game yeah. than the other. So <clears throat> moving on then. Um, we have gotten a lot of Switch rumors over the course of, well, eternity so far. (laughs) Um, and it just, and we just learned that some Nintendo Switch accessories are going to be revealed at CES this week in Las Vegas. So we're getting a foldable headset, which features a 40 millimeter, uh, 40 millimeter drivers and then folds up when traveling. Uh, Nintendo Switch starter kit, including a carry bag, stereo head buds, earbuds, cleaning cloth, screen protector, control caps, and game cases, um, along with some other stuff for the NES Classic Edition. Um, but I think that one of the things that um, uh, is interesting is the fact that this is going to have a um, a headphone jack, from what we can read into this, I guess. Sure. Um it's not like we didn't think there would be, but this kind of confirms something that Nintendo hasn't confirmed yet, is that there will be a headphone jack on this that you can plug in your headphones when you take this on the go, which makes sense. Um, since they're advertising this as a home console, but it's also a portable console. 
So taking it on the go, you'd want to have headphones. Um, and so that's just some, not necessarily rumors. Um, I think those are actual facts as far as I'm, as far as I'm aware. Um, these are just things that, uh, what was it? What Plus was it was in the patent. Yeah. Snakebite's rain, Snakebite, uh, the company, uh, announced these and they will unveil these at CES this week, which is, um, going to be interesting because this is going to be a week before, um, we see the Switch. <clears throat> but, Speaking of the Switch, unless Nate, did you have anything to add on to those little tidbits of information? Nope. Okay. Speaking of the Switch, I want to kind of round up some of the rumors um, from what we've heard recently. Um, as we've oh talked boy. about rumors in the past, and we know a little bit more about the console now. There's been a ton just like in the last week. Yeah. So I'm going to go over a few, and then Nate, you can, you can cover any that I missed. Um, so, uh, just kind of, these are all random, they're not anywhere. But we, there's a rumor going around that a new Pokemon game, like a third one in the uh, Sun and Moon area um, in the Lola region, will be announced for the Switch. <clears throat> My hope is that it'll have updated graphics and um, it'll look better. Uh, but it's also going to include supposedly 20 new Pokemon that'll be added into the game. Um, which will be interesting because they added a lot into the game, but they also relied a lot on the Lola Pokemon. Um, so if they do end up adding more, it'll be kind of interesting because they haven't leaked any. And typically new Pokemon get leaked really, really easily. Um, and that's, they're either really good at hiding this or this is a completely false rumor. Um, and then we, something that's not any surprise to anyone is that Beyond Good and Evil 2 is going to be announced this uh, this next week at the, at the conference. Um, it's still a rumor, but it's a very likely rumor. <clears throat> Because we've heard about this for quite a while now that Nintendo has been pushing this game. Um, it's going to be an exclusive for the first 12 months, so about a year. And then it'll be released on PlayStation 4, PC, and Xbox One. Um, and then the surprise that nobody expected was that Mother 3 is supposed to be announced um, as a title for the, either for the Switch or for the Virtual Console. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Um, then they'll, they'll say that, they'll announce that at the conference as well. Um, and that would be something that a lot of people have wanted for a very, 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 very long time. And it would be nice to get an official translation for that game. Um, then, of course, we have the Mario Kart, which is more Mario Kart rumors. Um, there's a rumor that there will be a pre-order date, which will be January 13th, which will happen right after the conference date. So right after the 12th, we'll be able to pre-order this uh, console. Um, there'll be Metroid Switch rumors um, from Unseen64. They've kind of dropped... I don't know if they know anything, but they've, they've tweeted out some information that they're more excited to hear about Metroid either at the conference or at E3 this year. And then, of course, we have Smash, Mario, and then some some people have been tossing around Nintendo VR. Like, that might be a possibility, so yeah. we'll, we'll see. Um, I don't necessarily think Nintendo's going to come right out the bat with the Switch and say, hey, we've got VR for this thing. Um, I think that'd be kind of foolish for them without a proof of concept for the console itself. Um, anything I missed there? Or am I... Um, is that all you got? Yeah, that's all I have on, on my list. I did, um, uh, but just up. Let me see, there is a bunch of, uh, stuff from that Obi-Wan guy. Um, two, well, the... Obi Wan, uh, for those that don't know, he's a, he's just a, a YouTuber, um, but mm. he apparently has a source that he trusts, and in addition, that kind of adds some um, credibility to him. He did have Laura Kate Dale on uh, for a little bit of an interview, um, and they unveiled a whole bunch of stuff. Now, uh, this first batch that I'll bring up is this is from Laura Kate Dale specifically, who has been. Uh, one of the main leakers for Nintendo Switch information, um, who's so far gotten pretty much most things right. Uh, you know, and, and some things that she brought up in that little interview is that there will be a record button. Um, that's kind of a big deal. I like the PS share type thing. Yeah, kind of like the share yeah. button thing. Um, that uh, Overwatch was apparently discussed to come to the Switch, but uh, it would require a lot of work. So... It, it, it's not really something that's being done right now. 
uh, it, it basically would take a lot of fan demand to get it to get it to happen. Um, the uh, the voice chats supposed to be announced next week, mm-hmm. which is something that the Wii U basically lacked. Um, it's weird because the Wii kind of had it. Yeah, I know, right? It's it's just weird. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's no more Fred codes. Uh, there'll be some form of Bluetooth. Uh, you have to buy the Pro Control separately, which I, I think most people expected. Um, Mass Effect Andromeda will not be on the console. Uh, there was also an update on this where they said that uh, it would take <laughs> a lot of fan demand to, <clears throat> to pull it off. And Was 3 on the Wii U? It, 3 was on the Wii U. Okay. Uh, and that's actually specified as one of the reasons why Andromeda will not be on the Switch. Because the sales of 3 on Wii U were really, really bad. Yeah. Um, Again, there's obviously a lot of reasons for why that that's the case. Plus, the Wii U itself sold bad. Um, the battery life is going to be three hours. That's not new; more of a reconfirmation of information that we already knew. Um, let me see. Uh, Joy Cons, uh, those little side controllers, they'll be available to purchase um, separately at launch. So you get the ones that probably come with the system, and you can buy additional ones. Um, which is important because, you know, if those things break, you don't want to have to send it to the Nintendo and wait all this time to get new ones. I mean, you, you might file your warranty and get some new ones, but you can go out and just buy new ones right away. Hopefully they're around, I'm thinking 20 to 30 bucks for those things. Yeah, they, they have to be. I mean, the thing is, I don't know, you know, do you buy them as a set? Yeah. Um, you know, are, are there going to be customizable ones? I like got something, you know. I'd imagine you buy later. them as a set because there's like a left and a right one. Um... Yeah, and that would make sense to me, but at the same time, there's also... Well, I'll get into this maybe later, because I know we have a special coming later. Um, <laughs> but So I'll, I'll keep that out, because this isn't a rumor. This is just me speculating. Um, let me see. Uh, there isn't going to be more than three GameCube games in the Virtual Console at launch. But However, GameCube will will have Virtual console this on the system, apparently. Uh, with... with three games at launch uh the joy con has an ir pointer that will allow for touch control um sd cards can be used at the switch uh the only color available at launch is going to be gray or you know that basically what we've seen that little black gray thing also on Um, a note for the sd cards i think it said uh, 128 gigabytes to 500 gigabytes yeah um but i may be a little off on that yeah And, and and this is one that people haven't talked about yet. The user interface. Uh, apparently, uh, on the dev side anyways, the user interface is very similar to Wii and Wii U. A um, little surprising. That's the case. But but uh, that's not a necessarily a bad thing. It's yeah, not it kind confusing. Of, yeah. It kind of depends what they mean by similar. Is it, is it the same? You know, if it's just like the same setup. Because basically, I view the Wii U, uh, like the, the similarity, like the... The overall UI, it's like a phone. Mm-hmm. You have like Icons, the you tap and them. Stuff. And then you have a folder, you tap it, you tap it. Like, I think that's okay. That That's fine. Um, it's just what they do around that interface. Yeah. Um, that's hopefully a lot better than what they did with Wii and Wii U. Which, it worked fine for Wii, but Wii U didn't really revolutionize it like it should have done. Mm-hmm. Um, it basically was a 3DS interface not on a home console. It just should have been better than that. Um and then that there was, been, that's the tagline for the Wii U uh, period. Though. Yeah, should yeah should have been should have been well, better than that. Um, and then Obi Wan had his own sources. Uh, this is where like the big stuff comes from. Like he said that Nintendo Switch is going to have VR. It is a thing. Uh, it is going to be announced, and it's not going to be there day one. Like it's going to be announced next week, but it's not going to be there day one. Um, it's going to be something that's going to come out in 2018. Um, so, you know, whether or not it's something, you know, who knows? Maybe it's something they end up pushing at the end of the year for holidays or something. But apparently Switch VR is is a thing. It exists. Devs can play around with it. Imagine that, like, and, and that's not, as, as far off as that sounds, you, you've got to also consider their history with, with uh, VR and their mess around with 3D, but also that quality of life project they had a while back. Sure. Um, I can where, see a lot of app uses for that. Yeah. Well, I can also see, like, they had a, uh, like that that hand thing that you'd attach to your finger looked like a blood pressure reader, um, yeah, yeah. that like measured your like how heart, scared heart you were in a game. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I could see that being uh, 
in like used in VR. I, I don't know. Like I, it's as far off as out out there as it sounds. Nintendo has taken a lot of like small steps in completely random areas that yeah. could all culminate into VR. Yeah, and, and another big thing, uh, this was because he kind of did like this Switch Miss thing where he had three or three or four videos talking about Switch rumors, and one of the ones that he put up was that uh, this is the big one. This is the one that no one else he thought if this ends up being correct next week, like this is this is huge, especially for his credibility, mm-hmm. and that's that uh, Resident Evil Seven is coming to Switch day one, and that. Uh, they are currently working on uh, bringing the VR version of it to the Switch, uh, but that if they are, they're have he he goes into some detail about some of the difficulties they're having with the VR version because obviously the Switch doesn't have the same power as like a PlayStation Four or Pro. Yeah, does. yeah. Um, so like there's there's some technical limitations, but uh, it, it sounds like like they're able to get some of it running. So if they do get that full thing running. Uh, it would be something that they launch in 2018, uh, which, again, would line up with the fact that Nintendo's not going to do anything with VR until then, mm-hmm. except announce that they're going to have it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, it also lines up with the fact that I believe PlayStation 4 Pro has a one-year um, exclusivity on the VR version of, the, of Resident Evil 7. But not the version in general. Yeah, not not like like yeah no. The Resident Evil Seven is going to be multi-platform right away, but just the VR version is going to be PlayStation Four exclusive yeah, yeah, yeah. right here, and it launches like later this month. So, mm. um, you know, it's, it does suck. Oh, Nintendo's getting it two months later. I'm like, yeah, but the Switch isn't out yet. So I mean, two months later isn't really that bad. Considering the console doesn't even exist in the public right now, uh, and it's only two months. So like, it's not a huge wait. Uh, so that's that's obviously a big one. A big third-party game. Um, and I know Lord Dale also says something like there's going to be at least one brand new IP. Um, that's like a big deal. Uh, I, you know, I'm, when, when I hear that, I'm thinking what something like Splatoon level good. Well, is uh, is Seasons of Heaven a uh, Switch exclusive, or is that something that's coming up for the other consoles no, as well? No, that's a Switch exclusive. The I can publi- see... Yeah, the publishers themselves announced that. So. Then I might. Then maybe that's the new IP. Yeah, Unless... maybe, but like it, we already know about it, and she just said this like the other day. So That's it's true. like we already know about seasons of heaven. Like there's a mm-hmm. whole reveal trailer, and a press release, uh, which I'm sure Nintendo isn't happy with, <laughs> since it sounds like Nintendo might have funded it. And we found out from uh, just today there was a company, an indie company that um, uh, they were doing Runner Three. The guys behind Runner Three, uh, that's coming out. Uh, they announced like a new character and everything. And they basically said that the game's coming to Switch, but they can't say it's coming to Switch. Like, Nintendo has told all indie developers to not talk about their games coming to Switch. That's weird. Yeah. Um, and it, it based on the fact that, like, uh, the, the obviously we know the Seasons game, you know, Seasons of Heaven got announced, and we know uh, the people at Image and Form have been talking about it. I think it's more of a, they're just saying, please don't do it, versus, like, you can't do it. Yeah, because there's been indie. Game, I mean, there's been indie developers already said, "Oh, our game's coming to Switch." Uh, Ukulele, it's coming to Switch. Yeah, not going to Wii U anymore. Like, like, so it's one of those things where I think uh, Nintendo wants to save all these indie surprises for the twelfth, but they realize they don't control these companies, so they can't tell them mm-hmm. not to not to hype up their game. Well, they can't um, not have indies on their console either, so yeah. they can't be like, "Well, if you say something, we're not going to lie you on the console." Yeah, and, and I even think like I think what the Seasons of Heaven people did was very smart. Uh, if they had waited for Nintendo to announce it at their thing, it could get overshadowed. Oh, definitely. That Whereas was not... when they announced it. Like it was like, wait a second, this is well, a that... real Edge of Four game that looks this good and can run. That can't stand game. up against like for for Nintendo fans, like exclusive Nintendo fans that only play like Mario and and stuff like that. That that wouldn't get. That'd be kind of like at the bravely default level of being yeah. shown off. Um, which if they again, get bravely default's great and it has sales, but like. Seasons it's, it's, of Heaven, like, right now, that is the game people look at and be like, okay, that is, like, the standard mm-hmm. right now. Because it looks like uh, The Last Guardian in terms of Yeah, and it's how crazy it because um, we do know that the footage they showed was on PC. Mm-hmm. So we we don't know how that, you know, may, and maybe that's something we find out at this event. Like, we finally see, like, Switch footage of it. Because mm-hmm. um, it is exclusive to Switch, so uh, 
it, what people have to remember, oh, why would they show PC footage? It, it's Games are made on computers, for starters, and that this seems like it's a pretty recent deal that went down. So it's not like they weren't making this game the whole time. They just didn't know what platform it was going to be on yet. Yeah. Um, so obviously PC is just an easy place to start. But also that also speaks to if they can just port it that simply over to Switch, then you know that that speaks volumes for how easy it's going to be to get. Oh yeah, big and, games and the thing the is, is like that again. That's why I said this partner with Nvidia is such a good thing for Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Um, they are very in sync with the PC crowd, and being able to easily transport games from PC to Switch is going to be like a big, a big boost uh, for this console because it. Right now, it's not easy to transport PC games over to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, despite the x86 architecture, because of some unique features they have, like the ES RAM on uh, yeah. you know, the Xbox One. It's more like they have to make the, the games for consoles and then port it over to PC, and PC gamers hate that. <laughs> um, yeah. Because they end up getting you know unoptimized versions of the game that runs Dishonored like Dishonored 2, Batman like, Arkham Knight. It just runs like garbage on hardware that destroys oh what, what PlayStation 4 and Xbox have. Yeah, so. yeah, don't remind me about that. Yeah, so like, I, I, I think this bodes well um, for that kind of thing, like bringing PC kind of games over. And, you know, if this thing has touchscreen capability, which all indications are that it does, you know, you can start thinking about games like even, you know, real-time strategy games and like stuff that's usually exclusive to pc mm-hmm. could theoretically work on the switch like a civ 5 or yeah, civ like a, 6 like, yeah yeah like that kind of that kind of game with a touch screen you, you know using a pen like you could that could work that was i think that was one of the bigger missed opportunities on the wii u was not having like a civ game on there well i think that it's because of the i'm not gonna say it's because of the touch screen but that touch screen was terrible i know but i mean like for, you'd for think that, kind of that would have been like the proof of not necessarily the proof of concept for the touch screen onto the TV, but it would have been a very good idea. Um, but also, we, we the the console probably couldn't have handled running a Civ game um, unless it was scaled down. Sure. So sure. I mean, it would have been cool. That probably would have. You know, the the new st- the new art style I think in Civ Six. I, I think they could run that in full resolution easily mm-hmm. on Switch. And I'm not saying that as like a slight on it. It's a beautiful art style. It's just they've kind of. The whole time they've kind of using like a, a like a kind of cartoonish take on reality, um, and now they've like taken that a step more towards the cartoonish side of things, which I think benefits the game. Um, and Civ Six reviewed really really well. Yeah. Um, and I, I would love to be like someday like Nintendo has been close with Sega, you know maybe get a Total War game over on the Switch. That would be awesome. Um, because that's like one of the best series Sega still has going right now, and it's PC exclusive. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. So like, th- there's a lot of rumors out there. I'm sure I'm even forgetting some, because um, I'm actually still working on like a giant rumor report for Nintendo Prime, and I'm a bit <laughs> sick for like the last week. So I'm, I'm a little, I'm apparently a little bit more up to date than you, but I know there's more out there. I just haven't <laughs> read everything yet. Yeah. Um, which maybe that's a good thing because next week is like the big deal. Like, yeah, this podcast is the last one you will hear before the event happens. Mm-hmm. Um. So and then I don't we'll know. record right after that, hopefully, and yeah, get that up as soon as possible. It's gonna be then if it crazy if indeed. The pre-orders are out the thirteenth. I might have to delay this and go pre-order. <laughs> yeah, I plan to be at GameStop the like when it opens. Yeah. Make sure I get my pre-order on the thirteenth because it won't be open, you know, at midnight or whenever the thing's done. But yep. I'm not. I'm not going online, man. Doing it in person. <laughs> I, oh. Online orders, forget that. I've never been wronged by an in-person order. So, so moving on, then we'll go into some fan topics, and then our, our special Woo! little thing at the very end. Um, we have we have three fan topics. So, the first one's a little long. So it's from Jesse Blaylock. All these are from Facebook. This one says, "Talk about the relationship between all the links. Some are related to each other, like Ocarina of Time link and Twilight Princess link." Uh, others appear to have no connection to the hero of legend, like Wind Waker Link. Um, do you think they all share any kind of connection? Since the demise cursed Link and Zelda so that his hatred would always follow them, doesn't that mean that it follows Link's bloodline? And does that mean that all Links are actually related? Uh, no, it does not mean all Links are related. Um, I think it re- meant... Oh, go ahead. Well, if you read the words closely and then you go check out like Hyrule Astoria... Um, it, what it, what it basically means is that the spirit of the hero will always reincarnate in some way. 
Um, like the Wind Waker link is clearly not blood related at all. Um, because it happens at a timeline where there is no, that, that link's gone. Mm -hmm. Um, and at the beginning of the game, if you pay attention, um, he's technically not even considered the chosen one. Um, he kind of has to earn the Triforce of Courage. It's Mm -hmm. not defaulted to him. Uh, where, like where it is with most other links, whether they're aware of it or not, uh, he has to prove himself. And which is one reason why I like the Wind Waker so much. Like that, that link is a very interesting link to me because that was like it, one of my first editorials on. Yeah, it, it's it's it. just one of those links that you know, uh, the one of the few links that has to prove himself um, worthy of being that hero. And he's not always just been the hero. Yeah. So you know that that and that's kind of the way I look at it as it's more so the spirit of the hero uh, always lives on and always rises up when it's needed. Um, and in the, they in just this happen case, to look the same. Like that's not yeah. like yeah. You know, it's like oh well, they're all named like, I'm like yeah. But that's more of a um, a development thing, yeah. a, a, an advertising you know click. They they could name them anything. It doesn't matter. It's the spirit like of the hero. Toby it could be Toby. Yeah. I mean, and, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> so like to me, it's like no. That doesn't mean they're all blood related. It just means they all have a legendary uh, you know spirit of the hero. You know, like a kind kind of like a an over residing. Um, like almost like a goddesses are always watching over the land. Yeah, and like they know when a hero is needed, and all of those heroes are connected with the same kind of spirit the very first hero had. Which right now we know the first hero to be you know Link, but you know there was stuff that happened before Scabbard Sword, so who really knows? You know, I kind of think of it this way too. When when he talks about uh, hating like the the generations after them um, and his mm-hmm. hatred living on, that's also more of a curse on not just Link and Zelda, but on the Hylians that come after. Yeah. So just the they, land they never of Hyrule. They never live in peace for very long. Yeah. And I, I kind of view it like that as it wasn't necessarily towards um, the them, like them specifically, but more as like a curse on the fir- future generations um, past Zelda and past Link. Um, of course it was on them, but uh, he sure. wasn't like seeing into the future and being like, oh, there's always going to be a Zelda and there's always yeah. going to be a Link. Um, the o- the <clears> only <throat> one that um, I think is always a continuation is Zelda. Yeah. I think that's Well, because of uh, Adventure of Link, right? They, they talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it just feels like... Um, I mean, even just logically, you know, it's royalty that's always having things. At, at some point, they tried to explain why they always named the daughter Zelda. It, it's a really weird explanation. I, I don't even want to get into it because I, I think it's just a bunch of BS. Uh, but it, 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 it's kind of one of those where it's the royal family. The royal family's been around since at least Skyward Sword. Um, you know, with Zelda and her dad kind of being the start of the whole thing. So it, it's kind of where I just think, that's just how they do that. There's always a daughter and it's always named Zelda and they just keep the Royal bloodline going and going and going. Um, you know, Ganon, he's persistent. It's the same. There's not multiple Ganons and multiple Ganondorfs. It's the same character. Yeah. Um, who, you know, because of, I think mostly because of, of, of the Triforce of power, um, he's able to, you know, live as long as he does. Um, and, and lived through all these thousands of years of all this stuff happening. Well, uh, and nobody, nobody necessarily ever kills him. They just seal him away. Yeah. And, and um, you know, he's also... It's also interesting because he and and Zelda um, both possess magical abilities that Link does not. Yeah. Um, like, they just have magic within them, and Link doesn't have magic within him. He, he can channel magic through items, you know, like yeah, the Ocarina of Time. Um, you know, to, to channel the power of music or, uh, you know, e- even... You Dins know, fire, stuff Dins like that. Dins fire, you know, like... But it's all external items that are already magical. Um, so it's kind of... It's kind of interesting how Link himself uh, doesn't really have that raw ability to use magic outside of Zelda 2. Um, but anyways, because the other two people can. But but I think there's just something about uh, that Triforce of Power and maybe it has to do with the whole Gerudo tribe thing you know maybe they just happen to live a hell of a long time because um, <laughs> we really don't know it's not like we see the gerudo tribe in every game all over the place yeah so we we've really only have seen no them idea in... what their what their life expectancy is we've only seen them in two games and in those two games they were in two distinct different worlds yeah so 
I mean, we 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 know they existed at some point in Twilight Princess, but they were all gone at that point. Um, at least that we know of. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's just a crazy, uh, crazy situation. So I, you know, it, it's a very good topic to bring up. I I just think. If you do the research and you read the Hyrule Historia and you pay closer attention to what is said in Skyward Sword, um, that you kind of learn that it's not a continual bloodline for Link. It's a reincarnation of the spirit of that first hero. Um, and that that's kind of... that That's more so the continuation, I think, of the Triforce of Courage. Yeah. Um, more so, I, I, I think... I think the curse and everything surrounding it has, has, it has to do with the Triforce of Courage continually moving on to the next hero. Versus like dying like when Link dies, that's the end. The Triforce Courage is gone. Like that. Well, that also happen. makes the characters more like Link's not really an, a depth character, mm-hmm. um, but it makes him a little bit more interesting as opposed to him being oh well my father's name was Link and he defeated Ganondorf and now I'm Link and I <laughs> defeat Ganondorf and right. my son will do the same. It's all it's it's someone different and adds a little bit, especially <laughs> like in the case of Wind Waker where it's a completely sure. separate Link that has no relation to any of them except for the tradition on the island. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of the same thing, um, of them not being related. And it makes them interesting, like I said. So, Alexander Zravko says, do you think Nintendo should add even more stealth mechanics in future main Zelda games? Um, this is tough. It is because then you start to get away from Zelda's mechanics and core mechanics. Um, and Zelda's never really been like a stealth game. Like, it's not stealth elements like in uh, Wind Waker, you have the fortress in Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword. It's everywhere have, in Skyward Sword. Yeah. And then even in Majora's Mask, when you have to go into the Gerudo Fortress, um, there's stealth. But it's it's never really been a huge aspect. It's more along the lines sure. of something that you, with the existing mechanics that are already in the game, um, you can also stealth. Not these mechanics are in the game so that you can stealth. Um, kind of the Wind Waker is completely forced. Skyward yeah, no, is completely forced. The you have I'm, to. I'm no thinking more about Majora's Mask. Right, um, I'm thinking like when you say that, I think of that's what they seem to be doing in Breath of the Wild. Um, like in the last gameplay video they showed, uh, Bill Trinan tried to go head on, and the uh, and Nate Bildorf or whatever went around. Mm-hmm. Um, so like you can stealth, but that's not the only way to to approach yeah. the world. Um, and, and I think that's more more what I want to see them do. I don't want to see stealth forced like it was in the Wind Waker, you know, with the Forsaken Fortress or forced like it was in Skyward <laughs> Sword. Like with the trials and yeah. and even the, there was a whole section I remember earlier in, or later in the game that like it's in the overworld you're traveling to a dungeon but you have to stealth around this entire camp because you, you lose your sword puzzles. and you lose your shield yeah. for whatever reason. and like they give you these excuses and, and and like I understand you know they had these this whole stealth concept and I'm not saying it's bad that I didn't enjoy it but it, it felt it, extremely forced like okay so I don't have my it sword, just padded but, the game but but don't I have like a zillion other ways to kill these things. <laughs> Like, okay. Um, and in Breath of the Wild, since you can pick up enemy items so freely, um, I don't think they're ever going to force you to have to stealth. Um, but they might encourage you to by making it extremely difficult if you don't stealth. Well, it might be along the lines of um, in Final Fantasy XV, uh, there's a boss or an overworld boss that's way, way too difficult for you at your current like power level or with the items that you have. Still thing around them might be the best option, or mm-hmm. you know, run head on into the fight. Um, but it's not like you're trying to get into a level or into a dungeon, and there's a giant enemy right in front of you that's way too powerful for you. But you have to figure out a way around them. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas, like you said, it I don't like it when it's forced. Um, I, I just keep thinking like whenever I hear the word stealth being put in a Zelda game, I I think people want it to be more like Assassin's Creed. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, I don't like, really want like di- that. like Dishonored. Yeah. <clears throat> and those games are great, um, but they're but Zelda's not Dishonored. It's not Assassin's Creed, and it doesn't need to be. Um, yeah. It's it's the same thing like, you know, The Witcher 3, you can kind of stealth in that game, but it's not a stealth game. Um, it's more of a, like a, 
secondary mechanic that you can kind of use. Um, and, and Zelda's very much uh, like that. And I, I, I don't necessarily, again, I don't want to see it have, um, like, again, the, the stupid sidle mechanic, like in uh, Wind Waker, um, because it doesn't need it. Sure. I, I don't think it needs it. I think yeah. if, if it sticks with its with what it's doing right now, with the different approaches and, and um, with a little noise meter at the bottom showing how much noise you're making so you can be yep. quieter, um, I think that's all yeah. you really need. Yeah, I, I like stealth more as like it's an optional thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you can do it. You don't have to do it. Uh, so, yeah, like, like when I think stealth, you know, we brought up some other games that involve stealth. Like even in Assassin's Creed... Um, it's more like Breath of the Wild, that, or Breath of the Wild is more like Assassin's Creed than anything else. You could stealth, or you could just go head on and just try to destroy everything. As opposed and, to like Dishonored, go. where it's a very bad idea to go head yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, you can do it in Dishonored, but you're going to get a really, really bad ending to the game. Um, or you'll die multiple times. Or you'll, yeah, you... or you'll just die a ton as you can't, you know, take on that many enemies at once or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in, uh, I, I like what they're doing in Breath of the Wild, so like, I, I guess... There are people who like the stealth. I personally am not a fan of stealth um, in Zelda. You know, I, I think games that are more focused around it are better. Like the Thief franchise. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, you're a thief. You're supposed to be stealthy. It makes sense. Um, so I think, uh, you know, unless they come up with a really, really amazing concept that absolutely has to be stealth. Um, I, I think I'd rather prefer what we've seen so far with Breath of the Wild um, and not yeah. what we saw with, like, the Wind Waker. Or, or Skyward Sword. Sword with the Silent Realms. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, I love the Silent Realms, but, like, that doesn't mean I want more of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, just leave it where it was. What, it one was and done. Idea then. Yeah, basically. <clears throat> one and done. Yeah. Catherine Kelly says, opinion on being able to address Link... Versus the normal system of changing tunics. Um, I don't know. I've thought about this, actually, um, whether or not I like it. And I don't know if I'm fully going to have an opinion on it until I play the game. Um, sure. Because I, I, I've i never... Not that Link isn't iconic in his costume, because he is. He's a, It's a very iconic costume. Um, but I've never really considered having the option to change clothing um and so i don't know if that's going to affect either my view of the game or my view of the character or how i play the game any at all um it's it might it actually feels more natural to be able to change clothes in the game now especially with where we are in rpgs where you know armor adding armor changing shoes or pants or shirts um, increases your defense or attack. Um, I think stuff like that's more natural now. So I think it's a good idea, but like I said, I'm not 100% sure on where I stand on it until I play the mm-hmm. game. But you played um, the game, Nate, so so give me some give me some stuff here. I love it. It makes me never want to go back to the tunic system again. And that's weird because like, that has been uh, one of the very few consistent staples from day <laughs> one. You know, it's all, you know, it, it's always been the tunic system, whether, you know, e- even when you get like the, the ring, the ring upgrade, you know, and you get the white tunic and like the original Legend of Zelda, like this has just always been what it is. And it's why so, people, so many people are upset that like we haven't seen a green tunic or anything, you know, and whether or not it's in the game and make this big deal out of it. It's because of how iconic that system is, how iconic the green tunic is. Um, and it, it's kind of one of those things in Breath of the Wild, it's almost, uh, I know it's kind of punny, but a breath of fresh air um, and how they're handling the the whole inventory system, including the clothing. Because I think if they went back to the tunic system and eliminated the way they do clothing in Breath of the Wild now, it's going like, to clash with how the rest of the game works. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, so everything else is customizable, but your clothing? Because why tradition? Um, and, and I think that's really what this becomes, is it's tradition versus gameplay advancement um and you know yeah they, they've had tunics for different gameplay mechanics but that's all very obvious stuff like oh you wear a blue tunic when you're in the water you wear a red tunic when you're in fire well do things need to be so obvious uh i don't think they need to 
Not anymore. Not in 2017 that we're in now. Uh, so I guess my opinion, you know, having experienced it, having seen how it affects the world, having the, the, the idea you could just take all your clothes off and try to beat the game naked. Um, or, you know, I guess in your knickers or skivvy or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> your underwear. In your um, knickers or skivvy. I mean, in reality, he probably would be naked, but they got to keep the rating down. Yeah. Um, you know, like if this was The Witcher, you totally would be naked. But And Link, this... Link can get the Master Sword, but he's already got a Master Sword. Wink, wink. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> no, so I, I like what they are doing. Um... But again, I've also played it and I've experienced it and I've seen how it affects gameplay. And I think it's really, uh, like a wholly positive thing. <laughs> but I think even the naysayers against it, uh, once they experience how it works and how good it makes the game, are going to be okay with it. Yeah. Uh, but again, you know, it, it, it is going to be strange. Like, seeing this game being advertised with Link wearing a blue shirt, it's really weird. Mm-hmm. Really weird. Not well, something we usually wasn't... see. wasn't... In, uh, no, I'm thinking for Wind Waker, some of the advertisements had him in the blue shirt, though, too. The pajamas, yeah. Yeah, but the, the, the box art was still... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Green and the box art was still that. But we we don't know what the final box art for Breath of the Wild looks like, either, though. Well, yeah, but we do know that the <clears throat> Amiibo look like. And there's That's no true. green tunic. That's true. Um, It's very clearly that they're putting the blue shirt front and center as, like, that is their advertisement get mm-hmm. up for him. Um. You know, in a lot of the footage we see from Nintendo, like, that's what he's in. That's not what he has to be in. It's, we already know just that because they... it's all customizable. But that is, like, the go-to. Like, there's obviously some meaning behind that particular shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so, I guess I'm, I plus, it's my favorite color. <laughs> and I'm not saying, like, blue. Like, yeah, okay, I like blue. That color of blue on that shirt is my favorite color. So, like, a little, I might have a little bias towards wanting it to stay that way. But. <laughs> It's it's like uh, Mega Man Blue. Uh, it just, only part of Mega Man Blue, because Mega Man yeah. like blue is like blue. He's, he's but, blue, like, he's and then he's little, got like he's got some... little accents on his armor that I, I like that color. Yeah. Right. Um. So yeah, that's that's Good all times. all about that and Mega Man and, and Link naked having yes. a master sword. Oh, so, gosh. like we did with E three, that arm cannon. Oh my god! Alright, I gotta stop. Move on. Moving on. And we just got rated R. It's okay. okay. Our our podcast is actually rated explicit on uh, iTunes. Yeah, we can say whatever we want. Well, there's an occasional swear word, and I think that's what did it, but it's alright. Um, so we'll endo endo for the win. Just like two, we we did two this time. Oh my god! So just like uh, we did with E3, um, was it E3 (laughs) or was it? It was, well, I don't remember because like we did a betting special and we just kind of stopped because we're waiting for the result of the loser, which, from what you told me before we recorded this podcast, will possibly be public before this podcast comes out. Yeah, maybe possibly. Um, <clears throat> maybe if not depends shortly on, after. Depends on my editing for this one. Yeah. This will be easy though. It's just nice. Yeah. Um, and my video works. <laughs> yeah. So just like we did for E, I think it was E three. Um, yeah. We had a, uh, a betting special. This was more predictions, though, especially since we don't have anyone to help us with this. Um, but came up. Uh, I came up with eight beforehand, and Nate said he's just going to come up with them on the spot. Um, eight predictions. <laughs> Which that means we... I'm going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> eight predictions no that we have that are going to be announced at E or E3 at the tw- uh, January 12th conference for the Switch. I'm just calling um, it Switch Miss. Okay. <laughs> you can call it Switchmas if you want, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that. I, I came up with eight. Nate's gonna give give me eight, I guess, um, <laughs> whenever he comes up with them. And uh, right, so I'm just gonna I'll, go like you do one, then I do one, then you do yeah, one, yeah. Okay. So I'll start us off. Um, awesome. I think only this is gonna be one or two of these is based on a rumor. I doubt any of them are actually. I don't think I like I researched. Only one of them. That's because I had to get some information on what year it was. Um, so my first one is that Nintendo is going to announce an HD remake for a non-Zelda game uh, from the GameCube. So we already heard the rumor that they're going to have three GameCube games on the Virtual Console, um, but I'm thinking that we're going to see some sort of HD remake of a GameCube game. Um, 
because as great as the Wii games were, a lot of people still really liked GameCube games, and the only ones that have really gotten HD remakes have been Zelda games. So I I, I think we're due for one. It's whether like the it's the only games at all from the Nintendo yeah. that have been remade or Zelda games. <clears throat> um, we we might get. I, I doubt we're going to get a Super Mario Sunshine remake. Um, that'd be amazing, but they're probably going to really want to push whatever new Mario game that, that's coming out. So if they do have a Mario remake or Super oh, Mario that Sunshine... that reminds me. I know this is... I'm getting away from the betting special for a moment. I, I believe Laura K. Dale uh, leaked the code name for the Rabbit and Luigi. Or yeah. Or the Rabbit and Mario game. Forgot it what it was. I totally forgot what the code name was. It was like but... Rabbit something Kingdom. Yeah. Um, And Grant Kirkhope is doing the music for it. The guy yes. that did banjo kazoo, banjo kazoo. Anyways, we'll get back to the bets because it's I don't know, it just popped in my head because you mentioned Mario. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, so I think that there's going to be a GameCube HD remake, uh, at least one, uh, announced on the twelfth. That's for pretty the Switch. bold. That's a I know it is. Bet right there because it, uh, everything's pointing to GameCube Virtual Console, which gives them no reason to remake anything. Well, and everything's pointing to them putting uh, Wii U games ported to the Switch too. So, um, this this one's a bit risky for me. I guess this one was more of like I'm really really hoping they do it. And so if I <laughs> say it, uh, kind of like the the Joel Osteen way of getting things done. I'm speaking it's kind of like everyone existence. just saying um, they want the Last Guardian to happen every single year, <laughs> and then it finally did. Yeah. Um, of course, that again. <laughs> to be fair, that game had been announced at one point, so ten years uh, like, ago, it technically existed, um, or at least was known to have existed at one yeah. point. Uh, whereas this is more of a, you don't really know if it's happening, you just want it to. Yep. All right, give me your give me your first one. Man, on the fly here. Oh, that was a pretty bold one. I guess I can answer it with a with another bold one. Maybe maybe a personal desire of mine. Um, I feel like they are going to announce... A, let's see, are you trying to write it down as I go here? Yeah, yeah, so I can keep track of it. Um, I can hear the typing. Uh, they're going to announce a, I'm, I'm going to say three total third-party exclusive games uh, for the Switch. Three, and, three at most? The, uh, at least three. Um, okay. For the first two years of the system. So and going to so, announce so like and obviously two of them, two of them we, we are, are rumored out there. Obviously, you have the uh, Beyond Good and Evil two. So they're going to announce at least rabbit, three third party Luigi, exclusives. I, I I almost want to cut out the Rabbit and Mario one because that's a, a co co made game. Yeah. Um, so like I'm not talking about like that or like a Hyrule Warriors two. I, I mean like actual third party games. So are we talking uh, about not, games? Not indie, not indie. Triple A. Are we talking about Triple A games that have not been announced yet? So like Beyond uh, Good and Evil two doesn't count well, or there hasn't been announced yet for Switch. Hasn't That's true. Like we don't actually know if it's happening for Switch. That's true. Um, so anything uh, that's a Triple A third party game, I know it's exclusive for Switch. Um. For the first two years of its life, I, I think we'll get three of those or more. Okay. Uh, I, I think it's only going to be three, but I'm, I'm going to put the or more in there so I don't. Oh man, they announced five. Oh, I guess I'm screwed. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I already think it's pretty bold. I mean, if we if we get even more than Beyond Good and Evil two, I'd be surprised. But like I, that's what I want. Mm-hmm. I want that those those big AAA exclusives. So. Okay. I don't my... know, like, that might be a safer bet. We'll see. My second one uh, is that a proper Pikmin 4 will be announced. Um, so we're, we already know that we're getting the one for the 3DS, whatever that Pikmin one is, Pikmin sure. Adventures or something. Um, we but, technically know a Pikmin game exists, supposedly. Yeah. Miyamoto has said that the, the Pikmin 4 is really close to being done. He said that a few months ago. Yeah. Um, and so hopefully, my hope is that they're going to announce bet. it. Yeah. That, that, that the, feels like a really safe bet. Yeah. Um, because we already know, like like you said, Miyamoto basically said the game's almost done. Yeah. You know, um, I can see them announcing it now and releasing it like fall or something. Then again, they said that about Breath of the Wild several times. Um, uh, I don't remember them ever saying it's almost done. No, but they did say that it would be out at this date. 
Um, yeah, but that's different than almost done. That's like, true. When you're like a year out from it coming out, like that's that's way different than me <laughs> Moto being like, yeah, we basically have picked before Dom, but like we use sucks, so we're not doing it. That's cool. true. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, mine good. mine is okay, Pikmin pick Four will be announced. Pick before. So you went with with a Nintendo game. I suppose I'll respond with one. Um, they are going to announce, but not show. Uh, so think like Smash Bros. Like when the Wii U was was announced. Okay. Uh, that they are working on a Metroid game for for the Switch. They're not going to give any hints at the dev team. Um, or any you know they're just going to say that they are are dedicated to the Metroid fan base and that with some time within the next two to three years there will be a new Metroid game and they okay. started early development. So announce, but not show a new Metroid game. Yeah, basically that's what they did with Smash Bros. Yeah, they said it's going to come. It's coming to, to Wii U and 3DS. So if they show it, then you're in, then you're in trouble. Then, then I'm screwed. Yes. Yeah. If they show it, then uh, well, I mean I'm happy if they do. But yeah, no, I'm I'm hoping for a new Metroid game. But, Metroid I mean, Prime game, yeah. and that that's way less uh, <laughs> less likely than than Pick yours. But that's okay. I figured I went a little. T- <laughs> I went a little too. I kept thinking, I'm like, you know, how many third third party exclusive games are rumored right now i don't even know so well it's um, like that's that's a weird comparison to say that it's more like we're more likely to get a pikmin 4 game than to get another metroid game well but like we know pikmin like the thing is no i know pikmin 4 has been talked about metroid is but i mean like on the show. i mean talking about that in general using those words because metroid has been one of the flagships for nintendo for a long time up until yeah. recently to say that pikmin 4 is more likely than metroid that's just a God. weird weird thought in my head Pikmin's easier, like cheaper to make. So yeah, that's true. Um, so like number... there's gonna be another Just Dance. Oh wait, we already know that. <laughs> I just want uh, every year. Uh, I like Just Dance, but my number I'm, three. I'm um, this one was a little hard to like put into words, so I'm just gonna read it like I have it, and then just kind of explain sure. it. Um, so I'm thinking Nintendo's gonna open the video like they did uh, with one of the E3s a while back, with like a special video at the beginning. Um, I think it was like two years ago they had the Star Fox one where. They were all different Star Fox puppets. Um, the year before that, they were puppets that I think they worked with Unseen 64 on or Mega oh, 64. Yeah, yeah, that was like the clay, claymation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the robot chicken one. I, I feel like they're going to do something like that, um, something memorable. Um, of course, I could be wrong. They could just walk out on stage and be like, or start off with a sizzle reel. But I think that they're going to do something like this um, just to... To, to get, like, show that they're still Nintendo, they still like having fun, um, and that they have ideas, um, and especially since if they do end up announcing Mother 3 uh, for this for the Switch, that I feel like they're going to do the same thing, like that guy walks, like the guy yells from the audience, um, give us Mother 3, and he's like, okay, or something, like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I imagine them doing something kind of funny or silly at the, the intro for the sure. video. Um... It's funny you said that because I, um, my bet's basically the exact opposite. So this is probably one that's going to get us either one of us a point no matter what. Um, I don't think they're going to do anything like that. Uh, my bet is that they are, uh, that that zaniness was kind of a quirk of the Iwata era. Yeah. Um, he is no longer you know alive. He's no longer with us. No longer running the company. Uh, as sad as that all is. Kimishima doesn't seem like the kind of guy is all into that stuff. Uh, and if you think about the Nintendo Switch reveal, uh, that was not quirky, that was not zany, that was serious to the point. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that they're going to maintain that in order to not screw up the marketing message for this system. Because remember, that that's all this, everything that's happened in the 12th, that's all this is. It's just the Switch. Um, so, as I said, it's Switch Miss. At least, as far as we know. Next thing you know, they make half of it about the 3DS for some reason. <laughs> that does, Nintendo does whatever they want, so they could. I mean, I would love. I, I love those animations and, and the puppets. Like I thought it was great, uh, but again, Iwata era and maybe trying to cater to North America, um, especially not so much the puppets. Even though you know, yeah, you know, Sesame Street and all that stuff. Well, no, I'd, I'd imagine more of like, not like necessarily the puppets, six, like the Mega sixty four collaboration. That was that was definitely an American. Thing. Yeah, and so was the um, robot chicken thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. I could. That's why I could see that is because but that's something that appeals more. I to. think it's gonna open. Um, I don't really think it's gonna open with the sizzle reel per se. Like I'm not gonna show a bunch of games. 
I think it's just going to open up uh, like uh, like Nintendo's old E3 press conferences did. Someone's going to come out on stage. Like, like they'll open up, you know, like, there'll be some music, and then, like, they'll have, like, you know, maybe even a catchphrase, like, welcome to the Switch or whatever. And I remember, like, this is all in Japan. Yeah. Um, and as far as we know, it's a live event, not pre-recorded. So, uh, you know, how they're handling that across the whole world, I have no idea. Um, cause like me, I fully expect it to be Reggie on stage, but like, this is in Japan. It's not gonna be Reggie. It's going to be Kimishima or it's going to be Miyamoto or something. Um, so I think it's going to be more like a traditional, uh, you know, they come out on stage <clears throat> and he pulls like, you know, kind of like a back in the day, pulls the switch out of his pocket. So like my bet is that it's going to be a traditional opening of, of music, uh, maybe throwing up, you know, the switch on a, on a big screen. And then it's going to start with, uh, not even a sizzle reel. It's just going to start with, um, someone, uh, ahead at Nintendo going into, uh, j- just opening up like, a, uh, I, like I said, a traditional E3 opening, I, I guess is what I, what I feel is going to happen. Okay. Um, and it, it's going to be weird. Cause as I said, this is in Japan, but so it's broadcasted world. I don't know how I'm, I'm actually really curious how Nintendo's going to pull this off. Yeah. Um, well, Maybe it'll be we'll subbed. Say, well, it's going to be subbed, but it's it's just it's going to be weird. It's going to be weird, but I'm okay. excited anyways. <laughs> so my number four is that Nintendo is going to reemphasize the companies that have committed to making games for the Switch. Um, okay. So like, either we'll see more, or we'll see uh, not not that we're going to see another chart, but they might list off some companies. They might say Bethesda has committed to. Um, making a game for the switch or we're going to see skyrim um yeah i, I think more oh yeah i'm sorry this is your bet so you got yeah and, and like we're gonna see we're, we're gonna hear them talk about these other companies that are third-party companies that either are are committed to bringing games to the switch or are already bringing games to the switch um so i i guess more along the lines of committed to because those are two different things um so we, you know we'll hear about atlas um i think they're having a press conference for a new game that they're coming out with anyways um, and then, uh, you know, Bethesda, that would Valve, but if Valve wanted to, Blizzard, um, just, just Valve examples. Valve release a game on PC, so. No, I, yeah. Um, so, I, I'm just imagining something, something similar to that. Uh, so, you think just, so, so the bet specifically is that they're going to. They're, they're going to uh, talk about the companies that have committed to working on the Switch, um, and making games for it. Like make a big deal out of it. Um, I don't know if they'll make a big deal about it, but they'll mention like, it at some point. Um, not like in the. I guess I, I have to be specific with this. So I was gonna be like, because this is like a free. Po- of course, they're gonna talk about third party games. Like, um, no, like they're, they're gonna specifically at some point mention either they're gonna say, um, major companies have committed to making games for the Switch, or these major companies have committed to making games for the Switch. Um. And they could show a sizzle reel for games that these companies have made um, that aren't really necessarily going to be on the Switch. But I- I'm just imagining in some way, shape, or form, they're going to say X, 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 X. All these companies are committed to making games for the Switch, whether they show that chart off again or not. Um, okay. So this may or may not be a freebie. Uh, you might have to give me one because I don't know if any of these are actually going to be realistic. <laughs> So, um, okay, that's fine. Uh, my bet, and I know there's some rumors behind this, but I'm going to, I'm going to make this bet anyways, because, uh, I can't, I, I'm, I'm digging through my memory bank and I can't remember a time Nintendo ever did it. Um, so it would be to me really shocking if they did, but I'm, I'm betting that they're going to do it. Uh, during the event, they are going to announce the specs of the Nintendo switch. And I don't just mean like. Oh, it's a 5.5 inch touchscreen. I mean, like the actual guts, like what, how fast that CPU is, how fast that GPU is. Like they're gonna throw up, you know, whether it's a spec sheet, whether you know, yeah, you know, what, I'll say they do it in the event, not you know, because if it's not in the event, it's gonna be in a press release. I feel like from Nvidia. Yeah. Um, but like I think Nintendo is gonna want to make make publicly known that this thing is capable of X, Y, and Z, um, rather than just saying yeah, it's easy to port games, but like not ever let people know how powerful it is to see if it's even realistic <clears throat> to port games. Yeah. Um, so I, I feel like um, for the first time, I think in Nintendo's history, they'll actually announce like this is a core, whatever, a 57 processor 
mm-hmm. and this is a you know custom Pascal GPU with X amount of megahertz or whatever. Um, okay. Like e- even if it's just a single slide, you know that they show whatever it'll ha- be sh- shown or said or revealed during the event. Okay. Which again, I, I it's probably not going to happen. It's, it's going to be a press release, but still, I oh, come on, Nintendo. <laughs> this gets what get gamers excited that are like thinking about third party games on the go. Um, Anyways, throwing it out there. Yeah, my number five, um, and I know that it's been a while, um, not like too long, but it's been a while. Um, <laughs> I think that they're they since this was the last thing a water really had a hand in before he passed, um, that they're gonna honor him some way with this, um, either with saying that this was his last project with us or in memory of Awada. Um, but I feel like at some, some way they're going to acknowledge uh, him and, and say in memory of him because this was his last thing for Nintendo. This was something that he came up with the concept for. Um, sure. And, you know, he had the name for the NX that still nobody knows what it meant. So uh, I feel like it'd be right to do it. And I feel like they're going to do it. Um, yeah, and actually that's the one thing that, uh, might do one of my old rumors off, is that if they're going to do it, I can feel like they might open the show with it. Yeah. Um, and that would really throw it to it. Because, like, if you remember, there was that old Reddit rumor that, uh, Iwata had, like, recorded, um, like, a, a message about the Switch. Uh, before oh, yeah. Past. And obviously that didn't happen at the reveal. But based on how they handled the reveal, it would have felt weird if they put it in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it would be something at like this event where they could show like a clip from that, you know, where he says, you know, you know, we're Awada just is Awada and does what he does and, mm-hmm. and, and says, I hope you enjoy playing with this. Yada yada yada. You know, just just whatever clips they could take. If that recording ever happened. Um, yeah. Like I could see them opening the show kind of with something like that, which would screw my bet, but it, whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Um yeah, that, that I, I, that's something I really want to happen. That, that's that's a very good bet. Um, whether or not they do it, I have no idea. Maybe they just want to focus on the future. But mm-hmm. um, it is in Japan where he was revered. So um, let's see. This is number five, right? Yeah. Um, I. All right. This is going to be. Ah oh, man. I'm going to get in trouble with this one <laughs> um, because this number is going to be really high uh, or it's not going to be as high as I hope, but uh, Nintendo will show off at least or show off or announce. I'll throw that in there at least 45 games for the switch. Ooh. And see, this is where uh, they're not exclusive, just games on the switch at all. Um, and this is where I'm really hoping for some sizzle reels. An, an indie sizzle reel would, would really, like, that could be 20 of the games right there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, I'm really hoping they throw a sizzle reel or something in there. If they don't, like, it's probably going to be 15 to 20 and I'm screwed. But yeah. at, that's what I'm going with. Uh, that's what I want to happen because, I, as I know, it sounds like a lot, but you have to remember this includes indie games. Um, and there's a lot more indie games coming out a lot more often than AAA games. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of hoping they do a, kind of a big indie, you know, heck, you know, technically you could argue, you know, VC games and, and stuff. So, like, I'm I'm, I'm really hoping. Like, any game they possibly show up is going to run in this thing counts. So, okay, I'm hoping. <clears throat> I was thinking about Mother, this. this w- w- watch, watch Mother 3 be, like, number 39 and I'm screwed. <laughs> That's it. It's done. <laughs> this isn't, like, a bet, but I, I think it'd be cool if they did, like, some games that are already out um, and... Kind of like they, they like they re-release Shovel Knight with all sure. the DLC or Binding of Isaac Rebirth with Afterbirth and Afterbirth Plus, um, yeah, and have like the definitive editions of those games and still being sure. su- uh, provide support for them later on, um, because they they just released <laughs> Binding of Isaac and just released Axiom Verge for the Wii U, um, so it wouldn't make sense to not have them on there. So you know you probably already got like three or four games out of out of the indies right there. Um, yeah, like that's, I'm, I'm just really like, there's a lot of ways to get to this number. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whether or not Nintendo chooses to do that, I have no idea. Like yeah. those rumors of things only a half hour long. That really puts a wrench in my plans. I'm it's just a, hour. it's just a half hour of sizzle reel. Yeah. Like, I'm like, <laughs> if that happens, I'm in trouble. Like I'm hoping it's an hour long is my, my mm-hmm. hope, but, um, 
We'll see. Yeah. That, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm sticking a pin in it. It's a high risk because I, I think they're going to show a lot of games. Whether or not they're going to show that many, I don't know. But I'm hoping. I'm crossing my fingers, man. <clears throat> Come through for me, Nintendo. Okay. Um, number six for me is I think we're going to see more of that Sonic game. Not Sonic Mania, um, but the new one that they teased at that... Uh, oh, the Sonic 2017 or whatever? Yeah, 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 with, with Sonic and then Generation Sonic. That's what I'm going to call him because yeah. it's it looks yeah, like... It has, mul- it has multiple generations of Sonic. Yeah. Um, it, that's that's. I think we're going to see more of that just because of Nintendo's history with Sega and their like partnership kind of that they've sure. had recently. Um, even though it is a multi-console game. Um, and, mm-hmm. But we have heard that it's going to be... It was said that it was going to be on the NX. Um so hopefully we'll see it on there. I think we're gonna see it. I don't know if they'll because Sega's never been one to do like press conferences specifically for their games. Yeah. So I imagine that this game could just be announced here. Um, say we've got the new Sonic game. Here's the trailer for it, and then just dive straight into that. But I think we're gonna see some form or fashion of this this new Sonic game, um, like either sure. gameplay or cinematic trailer. Not just sure. a passing mention though. Um, yeah, yeah, not like oh, it's coming. But like, yeah, actually, sh- like, we're, we're like, going to see like something from the game. Yeah, or like a thirty-second clip or something. Yeah, show something. Yeah, something more at least than what we've already seen. Yeah, they show that same little clip again. It's gonna be like really. Yeah. Um. Cool. 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 Um. This next one I'm struggling with. Um. I think. That I'm I, I'm kind of going against the grain here because there are things pointing to this, but I think Nintendo is not going to talk about VR at the event. What if they say um, we will not have VR? Is that considered talking about it? No, that's that's a confirm. I don't know why they would even say that. Okay, but. Um, yeah, they, like there's going to be no VR announcement. Um, that doesn't mean the system won't ever have VR. It just isn't going to be talked about at this specific one. Okay. Like especially, uh, I always feel like especially if it is going to be a thing and it's coming a year from now, that seems like an E3 announcement to me. Yeah, uh, I agree. Like I, I, I think that's a pretty reasonable one. But um, like if it happens, like I mean that's good. Like I, I don't like VR, so um, I don't. You probably haven't listened to the last episode of Nintendo Prime podcast, but like I ripped into VR pretty hard. Um, so I've done it on here before too, though. Yeah, like I, I'm just not a fan of VR, anyways. But this isn't me like being anti VR. This is me being like, well, if all the rumors are saying it's not ready, then well, don't even talk about it right now. If it's that far off. Yeah. And this is kind of the thing I just criticized Nintendo for doing with Zelda. Like, don't talk about things when it's so far away that everything could change. Yeah. Um, like they so, did with the quality of life devices. That exactly. Never like happened. they actually brought that on stage. Like, oh my god, this is a real thing. It exists. It's coming soon, and yeah. never came out. So like, never happened. My hope and my bet is that they are just going to avoid the whole VR mess. Um, and if it does get covered, it's, it's another day. It's not next Well, week. and that would make sense. Like, we don't want this to have Spider-Man 3 syndrome where they introduce too many things into the con- like into the video and then we never really see, spend too much time on one thing and so we jump from the next to the next to the next. Um, and I think that they want this to focus specifically on the Switch. And yeah. if it has VR support, they'll say, we'll talk about this at E3. Um, yep. but I, I agree. I don't, I don't think they're going to talk about VR here. Uh, at least I hope they don't. Cause then we're going to yep. miss out on switch stuff. <laughs> uh, number seven, um, whether it's in honor of Kirby's 25th or Ooh. if it's just because I think we're going to see a new Kirby game, um, like a 3d modeled Kirby game, whether that's Ooh. something like Kirby's air ride models to where, um, remember the the game that was announced for GameCube? Or now it's not announced, but it was shown off. Um, it wasn't might have been an E3 um, a long, long, long time ago, where you had uh, Kirby using the Kirby's Air Ride modeling, <laughs> um, going through like levels as Sword Kirby or Broom Kirby or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we're gonna see not necessarily that exact game. But something like, uh, I don't know, Kirby Return to Dreamland or, or just some some form of a Kirby game 
my hope is for something like what I talked about using something similar to those models, like a, like, I mean, I'd love to see Kirby's Air Ride in an HD remake. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Um, <clears throat> but I think we're going to see a new Kirby game. I think it's going to be in a 3D modeled, whether it's like a, um, you can move in all dimensions or if it's just a side scroller, that doesn't matter, but we're going to see a new, a new Kirby game. Um, yep. That's that's my prediction. Got it. Uh, so I'm deciding if I want to go safe or if I want to get risky. Hmm. See, that Kirby bet feels a little risky. Like, yeah, it does. It's like, oh, 25th coming up. But then they've also been releasing Kirby games recently. Um so it's not like the series has been forgotten, like say a Metroid maybe has. Well, but a lot of those Kirby games use the same uh, engine. Yeah, that's true. Like uh, Robobot used the same engine as a uh, um, whatever the other one was. I don't remember what it was. Whatever called. the other one was. I think. All right. How to phrase this? Therefore, you are. Oh. All right. This is a, a massive stretch. Um, I think that Nintendo is going to announce. <sighs> Hold on, let, let me make sure. I, so I, th- there's like three things I'm debating between, like what's the best one to actually put a real bet down on? Rise of the Tomb Raider or Switch? No, no. <laughs> I'm so dismissive of that idea. No, like I like Rise of the Tomb Raider. No, right? it's I just too, it's too late. It's yeah, too late. I know. I, that that just feels like Wii U syndrome. <laughs> like, like if RE Seven comes, like that's great, but like that's two months later, not like years later. <laughs> um. Hmm. Ah man, this is such a tough one for me. Pick one. I know, right? Right, right, pick one. Oh, man. You've got two more uh, left. you got one more left after this. So I just know, go... right? Like, oh, this is a problem making it up on the fly. Like, I don't have anything ready, so like, I'm try- I'm literally making this up on the fly. Like, I'm trying <laughs> to think ahead, and I, 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 I can't think ahead. Um, how about this? How about this? And, and this, is, this is another one um, spec-related, but uh, pretty specific, uh, and probably going to be completely wrong. Uh, the system, while it is docked, uh, based on the number crunching, is going to show that it runs at least at one teraflops. And the thing is, if we don't get the specs or we don't get enough information to determine that, I lose the bet. So, yeah, it's a very easy bet to lose because it requires that Nintendo gives enough information to determine that. So basically, if I get my one bet right, I might get this bet right, or it'll prove that it doesn't run that good. And then I get, and this this is not a bet I'm very confident in. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, no, that's this is more of a I'm really <clears throat> hoping, like please be at least one teraflops when you're done. Yeah, that's how I kind of feel about some of the other ones that I had earlier, like one and three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> just please happen. <laughs> okay, my last one is, and this is kind of based off of a rumor, um, but more of a hope of mine, because I still haven't finished this game. Um, I think Nintendo will announce a remastered version of Xenoblade Chronicles X. Um, not not a straight-up port, but a remaster to where things are done better to showcase how um, the Switch runs a game and how it runs an open-world game like that. Um, and I think that announcing it here would be the best idea. Um, and oh. I think it would be great if it was a launch game as well. Um, because we're still hearing conflicting reports on whether or not Breath of the Wild is going to be a launch game. Um, but if it's not, and Xenoblade Chronicles X is, um, you've got your giant open world game right there um, sure. to last you until Breath of the Wild. Um, and I think that that would be a perfect way to to start off the, the life of the consoles with a remastered version. Um, and, and there's there's just a few things, okay? There's a few things that you, you need to fix. Okay, the faces, for one. 
Um, <laughs> please, please fix the faces. Um, I knew this this was gonna come with a rant. <laughs> I, I I'm just I love the game. Okay, it's a great game. I just haven't gotten around to finishing it. Um, but like. The, the faces show no emotion. It's kind of like the same thing with Pokemon Sun and Moon, where the character's always happy or always stern-looking, no matter what's going on. Um, you run you run through cars in town like they don't exist. Yeah, it's it's just, there's a lot of, like, they spend a lot of time on the look of the environment and the gameplay, which is great. Um, it's just, like, there's specific little things, like texturings on people, that just, they need to be fixed, because they look kind of sloppy. Um... And, like, maybe, maybe just, I, I know this is going to happen, this is just a pipe dream, but, like, have your character say things more than yes and no, please. Like, this is an RPG game, and he needs to talk, or she needs to talk. I know they, they're not going to do that, because they'd have to call in every other voice actor um, that they had call in, like, Jeremy Lay would have to come in, um, Bryce Papp and Rick, they'd all have to come back in and, and re-voice lines, um, which... Right now, there's no indication that they're doing that. Um, but, like, there's just a few things that I want fixed. Maybe you could add new content. I don't think the game really needs it. But that's what I want out of a remastered nice. Xenoblade Chronicles X. And that's what I'm hoping is on the Switch. Nice. And that's my last one. So I had two really good bets that just came to my mind. Uh, but I want to win. <laughs> so I'm going to go with the one that I think is most likely. And I, it is that I believe that whatever game Retro Studios is working on will be announced at this event. Don't know what it is. Don't know if new new IP. Maybe it's the Metro game. Maybe I ended up with a two for there. Don't know. No, you get a one because you said that uh, they'll sh- they'll talk about it. I know. Wait, do you mean announced or just showed? Announced. So not showed. So well, whatever well, game, it, like it can be showed. Like okay, like I'm not like not just announced. Like it's just. In some form or fashion, we're going to hear about whatever game they're making. Okay. Yeah. So, like, you know, if they announce it with the trailer, it's still an announcement. You know? Yeah. So, whatever game Retro Studios is but working like we on, will we know should that Retro, Yeah, whatever game they're working on, we're going to find out what it is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and, again, that's always well, because everyone thinks that with Retro Studios, and then they, they just never find out. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that, that – want to hear what my other bet was going to be? What? Uh, it, it was going to be that they were going to announce that there would be at least six Wii U games remastered in, within the first year. Well, that's a pretty safe one too, though. Now, I six in the first year, like yeah, they got Smash, you know, uh, <clears throat> Mario Kart, Splatoon, but like guaranteeing that there's going to be three more Xenoblade Chronicles, which is pretty likely. Maybe, um, or they're working on something totally new at Monolith because remember they were helping with Breath of the Wild. No, I know they were, but. I remember hearing a lot of rumors talking about Xenoblade Chronicles X being ported over to the Switch. Sure, um, but, but we don't know that that means a remastered port. That's true. Um, maybe. Like a remastered port, like you saw what they're doing to Splatoon. Like that looks yeah. totally upgraded. Maybe um, we'll see a, a remastered Bayonetta so like, or like, Wonderful that's what 101. Like, I don't know, you know, could Platinum remaster one of those games? Could, um, you know... I mean, I'm hoping you're Nintendo wrong, or, but I'm hoping you're right. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, I don't know. But anyways, that's not one of my bets. Like, that was what I was going to go, because I honestly don't actually think that that's that safe of a bet in the first year. I think uh, Mario Kart Splatoon and Smash is probably it in the first year for remastered games. But, yeah. Um, like, they might have more in 2018, but again, that's 2018. Yeah. Because I don't think, I, I think the goal here is to not make the Switch feel like it's just a, a, a Wii U port machine. Um <laughs> So they want to spread out. I like, mean, for the unsuspecting public, they won't know what any of these games are because they never played a Wii U. So. Like, I pray, I pray that they at least port all the HD Zelda games they made over. Like, so uh, I don't Wind have Waker? to hold, like, so, and Twilight Princess, so, like, yeah. I don't have to hold on to a Wii U to play I hope they games. don't port it over. I hope I can play those games on the Switch. Well, yeah, but I have physical copies, so that... I, no, I know, that's what I'm saying, like... There's some backwards compatibility or something. I don't want to buy those games again. I don't know how... Backwards... How are you putting a disc in that thing, man? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I guess, depending on what they do with their account system, maybe there's a way you can convert it to a digital copy or something. Isn't it... I think it's uh, Sony, though, or Sony. Microsoft that has the, like, you have the game registered at some point, or, like, there's history of you playing it. You can download it on Xbox One. 
Um, so if they do something like that, that'd be fine. Yeah, but you still have to own a license for it. So like, what they do with the disc after it's installed is you still have to put the disc in because it checks the license key. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So like, that license key still costs sixty bucks, just like a brand new game does. Scan the so, u the the code in the back. Yeah, it, it's barcode. Yeah, so it yeah I don't know. Anyways, anyways, I I I strayed away from that back because I. Part, I don't know if part of me doesn't want it to happen or part of me is just like, there's no way Nintendo's announcing six Wii U remasters. <laughs> like, and we might end up with six, but they're yeah. not announcing them all right here. Like, that just, if it, it, to me, that almost feels like too much Wii U. Yeah. Um, I mean, they need to focus more on the future, not the past. And, you know, if they announce the Mario Kart and Smash, that also means that we don't have any Switch exclusive Mario Kart or Smash for quite some time. Well, that we know of. That we know because we know but, that well like what i imagine them doing in that case is having these games ready at launch and then around e3 announcing the ones that are going to be coming out in the holiday um sure. and saying well we've had the senior staff just kind of tweaking these games for the switch um and they've talked about having the more younger staff members work on newer games so maybe they have like so here's f-zero x mario kart yeah, something like that. <laughs> and it's like an idol game, like Tokyo Mirage. Diddy sessions. Kong Racing is back. <laughs> <clears throat> Thing is, all those games are good, so... Yeah. Um, ah, Diddy Kong Racing. I miss flying airplanes. <laughs> yeah, you can do all right, that cool. Well, I, I think that's all of our bets. Yeah, that's eight. So Sweet. we'll come up with uh, what I have to do, because I'm probably going to lose this one next week. Oh um, my gosh. Yeah, I, I, I'm not feeling too confident about this, because this turned into more of a wish yeah, like, list for I, me. I, yeah, I, I, f- I feel like uh, I don't want to say what, what I'm thinking of for your punishment, because I still haven't been paid off for the last one, <laughs> which I th- I think it was E3, and I'm pretty sure I got lucky. I remember that, yeah. like, that was like because, a technicality win. Be, yeah, it's because I gave you like, a it didn't technicality. Feel like a, it didn't feel like a true win. This one might yeah. feel like a true victory, but like I don't really want to say anything until I know the last bet's going to be fulfilled. Yeah. Because <laughs> last time I was like, if only I hadn't given you one. I don't remember what it was, but I was like, eh, I'll give it to you. And then it ended up being, I was off by one. I lost by one because of that one. Yeah, that, that's just the way it is. Um, yeah. That, and that's why I was like, are you sure? Like, I've left that totally up to you because like I, you know, me, I kind of knew what was coming up. Yeah. Because um, I had obviously looked at, you know, I'm, I was going over the results, so like I already knew what they were. I didn't know if I won. To be fair, I didn't add up the points because I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to be as surprised as you were if I pulled it off. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so I didn't actually know how important that point was going to be. But I knew, like, I knew I had a couple w- wins coming up. I just didn't know if it was enough. Mm-hmm. Um, ended up being enough. So. Yep. Uh. But yeah. Anyways. Uh. Yeah. So I guess uh next week when we find out uh, who won and who lost, I guess will be when we go over what uh what the punishment is yeah that'll be it'll be next week they'll probably be right after the podcast or right after the show yeah um, when because is that it, man it's gonna be a slam next week because like i have there's the show and all the coverage from it mm-hmm. um i'm doing like a live pre-show at nintendo prime which by the way uh i'll throw up uh maybe some links to where you can check that out i think it would shoot it on twitch i'm not sure if we're doing it on facebook um Anyways, I'm me and Eric will be doing a live free show and a live reaction, and then uh, I have the Zelda Informer podcast, and I'm sure an instant Zi reacts to whatever Breath of the Wild craziness goes on. Yeah. Um. So I got all of that to record, and then way late at night, at like midnight, recording like or even past midnight because I have no idea how late this stuff's going. It might be at like 5 a.m. Um. I have to record the Nintendo Prime podcast, <laughs> so it's gonna be. Oh, it's gonna be Do we know what time the, the conference like, starts? Uh yes. I mean, maybe that's good to reiterate for the viewers. Let me double let me double check. Okay. Um you have something else to talk about while I look that up? Um I mean I'll probably be live tweeting the conference. Uh, I'm I'm my plan is I wanna start trying to do something different. Um, whether that be live streaming uh stuff on Facebook or Twitch or whatever. Um and if you guys would be interested in like a live Q and A, uh, where we kind of do fan topics, or you just ask us questions, um, please let us it's know if you're be, interested. Uh, it's, it's gonna be late. Um, it is. Uh, they're dropping the details January twelfth at eight p.m. Pacific. 
So uh, 9 so o'clock for, me, for us. Yeah, it, it'll be 10 o'clock. 10? I thought we were me. an hour. I'm, ce- I'm central time. Yeah, so. so am I. Pacific is two hours. Oh. Uh, behind. So we'll be recording. So it'll be midnight. Yeah. Or so. Because like, I'll have to make sure Zelda Informer and Tunnel Prime's coverage is wrapped up before I can start. Uh, so it, it'll probably be midnight. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a late night. Yeah, it Long is. Long night. And I have to drive up to Oklahoma the next day, so yeah, we'll be. <laughs> you might it's actually be, be the one editing that video. Yeah, I had a feeling that's going to. Well, that's okay because I have. Uh, I made sure I cleared out those two days. So okay. Like, it, so I'm doing nothing but because I got to edit Tunnel Primes too. So like, that's fine. I'll I'll edit the next one. But yeah, so that so again, you know, check us out. You know, check me out. You know, re- live reacting to it for Nintendo Prime. Uh, check out the results of this betting show next week. Mm-hmm. It's going to be awesome. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. See you at a weird time next week. A weird time. <laughs> Hopefully on time on Friday. Yeah. We hope. We'll see. We'll see. Catch right. you guys later. Bye.